Welcome back to my channel. My name is Blair if you're new here and today we're doing a Christmas bake with me. In this video we're actually going to make four different types of Christmas cookies, three of which do require like a cookie, press, gun, whatever you want to call it. And I did film all of the baking in November because that's when I do do all of my baking. And you're seeing this in December. Um, I do this so I can be ahead of the game. My cookies are done and then I freeze them and then I just take them out when I'm ready to serve them for company or guests. So I hope you enjoy um, and I'll give you a little blurb about each of the cookies. And as always, all of the recipes are in the description box or the links if it was something I found on Pinterest. But I do hope you enjoy. So the first cookie is snowflake cookies and this was a childhood favorite. Um, it's like an orange cream cheese cookie, very subtle in flavor, but good nonetheless. of these cookies start out the same way you cream together shortening cream cheese the sugar egg yolk vanilla and the grated orange peel Once you've got it creamed really good, then you would add in like your salt, cinnamon, and your sifted flour. Now the flour I always do in like spoonfuls because if you do it too quickly throwing it in there, the KitchenAid mixer kind of just throws it out. Every year I tell myself I need to get one of those covers for doing this, but I always forget, so I just spoon it in slowly. So like I mentioned, all of these cookies you pretty much are going to use a cookie press for. Um, it just presses them out into little shapes. In this case I'm doing um, snowflake shapes. And it just makes them really quick, convenient cookies to make and like I said they freeze very well. And I will mention that the cookie press I'm using is by the OXO brand. Um, now I've had some very old ones that were handed down to me for my family, but they were old and not very ergonomic for your hands, so you would have a very sore hand by the time you were done doing cookies. This one my grandma actually ordered for me a couple years ago because I was complaining about how bad it hurt. But this one is so nice and so easy to use, and of course it's dishwasher safe. Now the second cookie is green tree cookies. These are my absolute favorite from my childhood. Um, and I always make a double batch of these every year, but they're just like a, again, a subtle flavor, but they're almond. Um, and one useful tip, it does call for almond extract. It is imperative that you get the pure almond extract. 
do not get imitation, they will not taste that good. Once again with these cookies, you're going to cream together shortening sugar in the egg. Once that's creamed, then you'll add in your flour, salt, baking powder, pure almond extract, and then once you've got that really good and combined, you'll start adding your green food coloring. Um, you don't want it like super dark, but you also don't want them too light because when they bake, the color does lighten more. So you want a good amount of coloring, but not overdoing it. When hearts are open, everyone out there deserves a little bit of love. Tenderness and smiles so sincere. Now's the time to reach out and to brighten someone's day. The magic of the holidays is here. Oh, Christmas, it's what. Now one thing too with spritz cookies, because there are three of them, um, it is very important that you keep an eye on them. You do not want to brown any of these cookies. So when the time says like 10 to 12 minutes, you might want to start with 10, see how your oven does, because you don't want them to brown. And also with the green Christmas tree cookies, I usually do like half of them with no sprinkles and then the other half with sprinkles. Um, and they're good either way, it just adds a little more sweetness when you put the sprinkles on them. Now the third cookie is a gingerbread spritz cookie and I will say I've tried to make gingerbread cookies in the past and it's always kind of an epic fail for me. Um, so I thought I'd try it again this year. It didn't go as great as I wanted and I probably won't make them again. Um, but the recipe I did find on Pinterest, it wasn't a bad recipe, I just don't think I'm very skilled at making gingerbread cookies. So for the gingerbread though, you cream together um, butter this time, brown sugar in a mixing bowl for a few minutes until it's kind of smooth. And then from there you'll add in like your molasses, your egg, and your vanilla extract and mix again until combined and creamy. And then according to the recipe, you do in a separate bowl, um, like the flour and all your seasonings, um, and you kind of mix it together and then spoon fill it into the mixer to combine it with your wet ingredients.
so the batter for this one is a little bit more sticky than what um, the other ones are. That's why I wasn't sure I liked it. Um, but basically you're supposed to chill it. It said for 20 minutes. I ended up having to do an hour and a half to get it to a good consistency for the cookie press. And I will say the cookie press I had didn't have a gingerbread um, stencil thing. So I used a teddy bear and it was just so hard to do. I don't really know if these look like teddy bears. Some of them were really odd shaped. <laughs> So the fourth and final cookie is your classic sugar cookies. Um, the recipe I use, I got off um, Pinterest again. I think it's a Williams Sonoma recipe. Um, it's very subtle. It's not super sweet, which is intentional because you will decorate them later with like royal icing and that adds a lot of sweetness to them. So for this one, you're going to cream together the butter and the sugar. And then you'll mix in egg, vanilla, and your baking powder. Once you've got this all combined and really creamed together, then you'll add your flour. And again, I do it in spoonfuls, and they even tell you to kind of do it spoonfulling it at a time so it gets stiff. Um, once you've chilled the dough for a little bit on this one, then you're going to roll it out and use cookie cutters to make your shapes. Try not to roll it too thin. I always try to keep it like maybe a quarter inch thick. That way they're still nice and soft um, once you've baked them and on top of that froze them. And for decorating them, the royal icing recipe is actually in the same link that will be down below for the cookie itself. Um, it's the one I use every year. And I will say if you're going to freeze them like I do, you kind of want to take them out like a day beforehand just so they have time to thaw. You don't want to put the icing on like a frozen cookie.
So I hope you enjoyed watching me bake cookies today or when I film this. Um, and as always, I hope everybody has a blessed day.